What's going on guys, meteorologist Jonathan Kegg is with you and in this video we are going to break down my top five can't miss astronomical events of 2023 and there are a lot of them. But I'm going to share with you at least the five I'm most excited about. We're going to start with number five and this is going to be a pair of meteor showers. I typically see the meteor shower as a cop out on these lists because they happen every year but they are going to be extremely special this year because... They're going to be not impacted by the moon at all. They're going to be completely dark. So we're going to start with the Perseids. They're up first, August 11th and 12th. Those are going to be the peak nights to mark on your calendar to see these. Again, you're going to want to look towards the northeast sky. Typically after midnight, the later you get into the late evening, early into the overnight, that's going to be the higher opportunity. At least those meteors are going to appear higher in the sky because the radiant constellation is higher in the sky. This year, you can expect in completely dark skies up to 90 meteors per hour. Again, you need to get away from the city lights, but a pretty good show. My favorite annual meteor shower are the Geminids, and these also are going to be unobstructed by any kind of moonlight, so you're going to want to get out again away from the light pollution. These ones peak every year in December, December 13th and 14th, and again, you're going to look east after sunset, and again, closer to midnight local time and into the early morning hours, you will see more meteors per hour because the constellation Gemini, where they appear to originate from anyway, from our perspective, higher up in the sky. These ones are really cool because this is from an asteroid rather than comet debris, and they produce and burn at different colors in the night sky, depending upon the element that is kind of falling through the Earth's atmosphere. So really cool stuff here, and in completely dark skies, the Geminids can produce more than 100 meteors per hour. Again, in completely dark sky. If you are in the city limits or have any kind of light pollution, you're not going to see the fainter ones. That brings us to number four here, the Jupiter-Venus conjunction. You're going to notice through February, the two brightest objects in our night sky getting closer and closer to one another. They will be at their closest point to our perspective. That's what a conjunction is, of course. They are going to still be very, very far apart in outer space, of course. But from our perspective, they're going to look really, really close. Remember the Christmas star, quote-unquote, from a few years ago back in 2020 when the conjunction was between Jupiter and Saturn. Now we're going to have an even brighter one here, Jupiter and Venus, going to get pretty close in the night sky. And again, that is going to be looking in the western sky just after sunset. So looking forward to that one. Number three on the list. It's super rare. Not a lot of people are going to be able to see this one. But because it's so cool, I had to include it in this top five list. The only place you're going to be able to see this, we're talking about asteroid 319, Leona, moving in front of one of the brightest stars in our night sky, Betelgeuse. It's the iconic shoulder of the Orion constellation. And basically what's going to happen, if you are in the Florida Keys or in extreme south Florida, you're going to be able to see this. It's only going to last for about 10 seconds, but basically what happens here, asteroid 319, again, Leona, is going to basically eclipse Betelgeuse, occulting the star. It's going to dim for a second. It'll blink for about 10 seconds. So it'll look like Betelgeuse disappears. And then the asteroid moves on its way. Again, allowing its light to show again. So some pretty cool stuff. Again, it's extremely rare. And again, you're only going to be able to see it in the U.S. in the Florida Keys or extreme south Florida. You'll be able to see it in parts of southern Europe, like southern Portugal, getting into southern Spain, Italy. But at least from the United States perspective right here, and again, as mentioned, it'll block out the star's light for about 10 seconds. This is going to be on December 12th at about 8.26. That time could fluctuate as we get a little closer to the event in December. But nonetheless, uh, I think if you're planning a vacation, trying to get out of the winter cold, if you're viewing this video anywhere from Florida, that is a great spot to plan your vacation in December. All right, Comet ZTF, number two on my top five list. It's all the rage right now. This video is being recorded on January 15th, okay? The comet is brightening. It is passed by the sun. It is working its way toward Earth. And on February 2nd, it will reach its closest point to Earth. Now, there is a lot of headlines, catchy headlines. This is going to be this bright green comet in the night sky. I want to be clear about something. This is going to be a really, really awesome event. 
it could be a naked eye comment. But the potential for the Naked Eye Comet really resides with getting outside again of the city limits. This is not expected to be anything like Hailbot was when that comet in the mid to late 90s was just hanging out there in the night sky, very easy to view. This is probably even going to be a little bit dimmer than what Comet Neowise was. That was a Naked Eye Comet back in 2020 in the Northern Hemisphere. You can certainly see it a little more enhanced with binoculars or telescope. Same deal here. It's going to appear like a bright smudge near the Big Dipper with your naked eye outside of city light. So you need to get into those completely dark skies again. On January 26th, you're going to look north of the Big Dipper. This is going to be in the morning hours. The big bright moon in the evening in January, early February will limit viewing there, at least with the naked eye perspective. Once you get towards February 2nd, again, that is when it's going to be the closest point to Earth. You're going to look to the left of the Big Dipper. Again, before sunrise in late January and early February in the northeast sky, that's where the Big Dipper will reside. So some really cool stuff here. Again, it's not going to be as big and bright as some of those headlines are suggesting. Nonetheless, really, really cool. I would 100% recommend getting a pair of binoculars or a small telescope. That is no doubt going to enhance the viewing of this comment that, again, as a lot of people are talking about, hasn't been around here in 50,000 years. It's on that orbit, so this comet won't be back to Earth again uh, way before anybody viewing this video is uh, will be around again. It'll be back in about 50,000 years. Which leads me to the top pick here, at least in my opinion anyway, of the best events of 2023. The Ring of Fire Eclipse, a super rare event, Again, this is going to be visible in the United States, not everywhere. Everywhere is at least going to see a partial eclipse in the U.S., but a select few in the West are going to see the annular or Ring of Fire eclipse in all of its glory. We're going to show you who's going to has, who has the potential to see that. Again, all of this is weather permitting. Same thing happens as in a total solar eclipse. That's where you see the corona of the sun, the atmosphere of the sun, when it's completely blocked out by the moon. But nonetheless, you are going to see literally a ring of fire because the moon is still moving in between the earth and the sun, but it's not completely blocking it out. So the outer edges of the sun are still going to be visible, making that very thin ring. It is really, really cool what these look like. Remember back in 2017 when we had the Great American Solar Eclipse? You could you need those glasses. You need those special glasses. In any way, shape, or form, you cannot look at the sun directly because your, sun, your eyes will be damaged. So you need to have those special eclipse glasses. Remember, if you were around or paying attention to that eclipse, there were a lot of fakes out there. They sold out fast. So now's a good time to get these. If you are interested in seeing either the full thing or the partial portion of this eclipse. So if you're watching from Florida, we're going to see about 50% of it. So it's going to look like Pac-Man, I always say. It's going to look like the moon is literally taking a bite out of the sun. You see it there. So it's going to look something similar to that. So it's going to get a little darker. Temperatures will cool down a little bit into the afternoon. Same deal up towards New York City. We'll see about 20% of the eclipse, so a little bit less. About 10% way up into Maine. The main event starts in the morning of October 14th. There is where we're going to see it in that thin line there for some about Eugene, Oregon, Elko, Nevada, through Albuquerque, Santa Fe, uh, into parts of New Mexico, Midland, Texas gets the full deal, San Antonio, Texas. And then this moves towards the Yucatan Peninsula, Belize, Honduras, Nicaragua. Get in on that as well, at least part of those countries. Really cool stuff here. But again, to see the ring of fire effect, you have to be in that very thin line out west from Texas to Eugene, Oregon, right there during the day. So the top pick isn't happening at night, of course. You need to have it happen during the day as the sun needs to be out. I have a little bonus for you. We're going to jump into 2024 because an even cooler event is going to be happening, arguably anyway. We're talking about a total solar eclipse. So if you remember from 2017, 
where the skies, in totality anyway, completely go dark. When the moon completely blocks out the sun. And for those few minutes that you are in totality, as it's called, you can remove those special eclipse glasses because the moon is completely in front of the sun. And then you quickly need to put those back on again. But April 8th, 2024, start preparing. This is one of those events where you kind of move your schedule around. You plan to travel to where this is happening because they are extremely rare. And we are being, again, we have the privilege in the United States anyway to see a ring of fire eclipse in 2023. And now the total solar eclipse back in April 8th of 2024. That's going to be places like Dallas, Texas, Little Rock, Arkansas, through Carbondale. Carbondale, by the way, got the full effect of the 2020, uh, the 2017 solar eclipse. If you remember, that one started also in, in Oregon and kind of came in this direction, exiting out uh, towards the Carolinas. So Carbondale gets this one as well. Indianapolis, we will see totality. Erie, Pennsylvania, then up into Burlington, Vermont, and then into parts of Maine. Similar, again, if you're watching from Florida, we're going to see about half that. We will see a partial solar eclipse. So again, the special eclipse glasses will need to be used and stay on through the entirety of the event. Nonetheless, really, really cool stuff, uh, no matter where you see it. But certainly, again, I would recommend finding a vacation spot anywhere in here. And also some of the resort towns in western Mexico are going to be seeing this as well. Climatologically speaking, this time of the year in April, we're talking the opportunity for clouds to be around, certainly through Mexico and Texas, are pretty low. So again, if you're trying to plan a trip in spring of 2020, I'd recommend somewhere out there because, again, once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to see uh, a spectacle like this. So that's kind of a bonus there for you in my top five. Let me know what you are looking forward to most over the next year when it comes to night sky viewing. Did I miss anything? Is there something that you would like to see that you are looking forward to that's not in this video? I would like to know about it. Again, if you enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing. Certainly give it a thumbs up. It helps YouTube push this out to more people because I would like people to know what they can view Again, in the night sky or daytime sky, as we just showed you with those two eclipses there. Uh, a lot of cool stuff happening in 2023. Again, if you like this video, please consider subscribing. Happy viewing. And again, we're going to give you more updates on these individual, individual events on this channel as we get closer to them. But I wanted, for your planning purposes, to be able to break this down for you kind of month by month. Because there is a lot of cool stuff to look forward to in 2023 and in 2024. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a great one. We'll catch you next time.